Bye. Welcome back. Uh, this light is going to get very annoying here, but I'm trying to light up the inside of the cabin top as much as I can uh, for the best video possible. Uh, but I wanted to get everyone up to date on where we are with the build. You'll see here the interior of the cabin top is finished. Uh, so we are ready to start putting doors back on um, and continuing forward with the build. Um, there's been a, <laughs> these, this cabin top and doors, this whole section has been a lot of work. Um, I would say one of the least enjoyable parts of the build just because there's so much dust so much work at one point um right before actually i painted the inside uh going from pretty much as soon as we put white down for bed um took the whole garage out and i was probably outside until i don't know two or three in the morning um took the whole garage out dusted every single part as they went back in i mean i sprayed the concrete anyways so much dust these were a lot of work but i'm very very happy with how they turned out uh, it was a, again, a frustrating process. So I tried getting video um, every once in a while, but when you're out here for, I don't know, blitzing 30 minutes at a time in the dust and then stumbling your way through learning something, it was not fun to record. Um, so instead of trying to make some kind of a makeshift video, I just wanna go over all the wins and basically um, what I would do again uh, to get it to this stage where it is now, um, and kind of the lessons learned. So uh, first thing on the interior portion, of the cabin top. The big thing uh, that was very, very helpful to use uh, was this Total Boat, Total Fair Fairing Compound, Epoxy Fairing Compound. It is so much easier to sand than using uh, micro balloons. Uh, this full transparency, I did get this for a discount from Total Boat. Uh, there's a link in the description if you want to use a, a discounted link uh, to purchase it. But I would, even if I did not have their, uh, uh, their support, I would have bought this uh, a million times over again. Uh, it was very handy to use. The reason why um, I ended up still having to use uh, balloons, so micro balloons, whatever you call it, in the epoxy was actually I ran out of this stuff and had to do some finishing work. And I thought, you know what? Everyone else out there uses micro balloons. I'll just do that. It was like a night and day difference uh, using it. And uh, I don't know if that was maybe just the epoxy I was using, micro balloons, whatever. Um, but this total boat stuff just sanded so easy. It did not sag. I didn't have to worry about mixing certain quantities. Um, but I will insert some pictures here uh, showing all that it went into, um, I guess, certain areas of smoothing. Inside of here, I had uh, where the, the canopy came from vans. It wasn't perfect. Uh, I did make modifications, which I'm going to get to here shortly. Um, but overall, even if you're not doing these modifications that I did, um, I would definitely use this Total Boat stuff again. I didn't even need another batch of it. This is actually unopened, uh, but I know I'm gonna be using this uh, going forward on uh, whether it's the wheel pants or I don't know if I'll need work for the, the cowling. Uh, whatever the case may be, I'd much rather use this stuff um, than the traditional method of uh, micro balloons. Um, but I guess getting into modifications that I made. You'll notice I do not have an overhead console. Um, I mentioned it in previous videos, but just to recap, we're gonna have an AC system. The AC system is a system that's not gonna be utilizing a overhead console to force air up forward. Instead, we're gonna have vents in the top right and top left portion of the rear bulkhead that's going to kind of be sending air forward. So not having an overhead console uh, meant I also had to make this area pretty. Uh, I kind of seized the opportunity. I knew I was gonna be doing work up here where a lot of people can hide that factory kind of ugly looking finish that's on the inside. You can hide it with the overhead console through here. Uh, I had to finish that off. So I figured I might as well, while I'm there, add a couple of anchor points. So from McMaster, uh, I'll include somewhere on the screen here uh, what they look like, but um, these little net plate type deals that are meant to be bonded into location. I used a structural mix of epoxy, uh, bonded them in, and uh, basically now I have three mounting points for anything in the future. So um, I've seen people using um, like a seat belt hanger or a headset hanger, or if I want to mount a, a camera out in the future, or if I hate this thing of not having the overhead console, not having lights up there, I can always do a makeshift overhead console. And I have a couple of mounting locations if I wanted to make something custom. Uh, but anyways, it hides very well with Zolotone, which I'm gonna to get to here uh, shortly. Uh, but the way I did it again is I mixed up a, a mix of structural epoxy I forget what I used. I think it must have been milled glass fiber. Made a very, very strong epoxy mix, which actually, this is a tangent, but I made a second one uh, that I put on a uh, kind of a test piece, and it is very, very strong. I could not break it off of the, 
the piece of wood that I tried to epoxy it to. So it's very, very strong. So again, three different locations, but I use this total boat fairing compound uh, to kind of work my way up and just really, really smooth and just float that in to where now they are very, very hidden. I'll include some kind of a video overlay in the editing process, um, but it looks really, really nice, hides well. Another thing I did up front, which you may be able to see, is I did choose to uh, fiberglass in these front pillars here. Uh, from Vans, it comes with more of a rounded edge with a, a, a harsher flange at the front windshield portion. Uh, instead of that, I went ahead and actually I used scrap fiberglass. So being the, the hoarder that I am, I, uh, when I cut out the windows for the doors, I held on to the, the scrap material and that worked perfectly. I ended up taking a ruler, I forget which one it was, I'm guessing this is a the two inch width ruler, maybe two and a half. Anyways, made long strips and a lot of the, the glass already had curves in it from the door profile. But anyways, cut those down into little pieces, found ones that kind of matched the profile well. Uh, ended up using, uh, what did I use? I used super glue with instant activator spray to grab each corner just to get it loosely held in there. And I just crammed in a uh, structural epoxy mix into the sides and between them, just really, really slathered it in there, pushed it into all the gaps. After the fact, went down and sanded it nice and smooth. And then over the top of that, put down fiberglass cloth uh, and laid a wet layer of, of epoxy with fiberglass cloth over the top of it, really kind of bonding it in here. Uh, and then again, use this, uh, this uh, fairy compound after the fact to really smoothen out the transition. And it looks awesome. I would totally do it again. The other thing that I did do is it's in the future, if I ever choose to, I drilled a hole and that hole there can be, I can snake anything up there that I want. So if I did want to run power up here, so say for a um, camera charger or a, uh, a light, going back to this topic of a light, if I uh, wanted to run power up here for a light, I have now a, a hollow channel here on each side where I could find a way to snake a wire up in there to that little hole there. I think this, this front portion here is probably what I'm most satisfied about uh, with this whole cabin top. Um, but going backwards from there, um, you'll see possibly in frame four studs in the back. Um, those four studs actually are perfectly matched with this guy here. Those who follow on Instagram, I posted some teasers about this in the past. I think I even mentioned exactly what it was on, on a story in the past. Um, but it is a mounting tray for a Starlink Mini. Um, so I do not own a Starlink Mini currently, um, but I found on Onshape someone had already made um, exterior, I guess, 3D printed cases for Starlink Mini. And I designed this around that, uh, kind of giving myself a little bit of fudge factor, a little bit of width on each side, made this cage. Also got input from, from Brendan, another RV10 builder, um, a couple of other engineer friends, and got some input from them and came up with this deal here. So send, get, send, I reached out to them, told them what I was doing. Um, they actually were willing to sponsor the video here and provided this part to me. Uh, but it is a awesome part. They took that file from Onshape that I had and um, anyways, a couple weeks later, ended up with this beautiful powder coated part, uh, which will go right up there on those studs. The other cool thing about those studs now is since those are based on this, and since I have a CAD file for this part here, if I ever choose to mount anything else there, I know the exact placement of, uh, of those uh, holes for those studs. Uh, but if I choose to in the future, even if I don't end up mounting a, putting a Starlink Mini into this, um, I could use this for anything else. I could maybe 3D print an attachment for back ends of, of fishing rods and I can have a rod holder up there. Design this so it could also be used to hang clothes from. So hanger could kind of loop over the edge there. Yeah, so kind of a, a neat attachment point. Also added a couple of uh, random quarter inch holes on there. Uh, so if I ever wanted to mount anything either inside of here, underneath, whatever, um, I have a cool little attachment in the back. So thank you again, Send Get Send, uh, for being willing to do that for me. Um, other than that though, the interior finishing. I used a black epoxy primer uh, followed by Zolotone on top. And I stole this idea from Build Fly Go. I saw he used it in a, a video a, a while back. I asked him what the product was. It was Zolotone. Um, so this here on the interior is Onyx Black. It looks really cool. It has a nice speckled finish. It kind of reminds me of that felt, um, that like subwoofer box felt. I used to do car audio systems in high school for, for my money. And um, anyways, it reminds me of that carpet that we put on sub boxes. Uh, where it's kind of a, a charcoal finish. Uh, it does have, again, the, the, the tones of white, black, grays. It comes off as a, as a charcoal, I guess, is the way it comes off. Um, it is a textured finish, so I, um, that was part of also the whole plan here, was knowing that the textured finish would hide a lot of my really shoddy uh, filler work. I was never gonna get this to a, um, a show car finish on the inside, and I didn't need to, because this stuff comes out of that gun 
um, like a really heavy texture, like orange peel texture. Um, so getting onto the topic of the gun that I used to spray it, I use this guy from Harbor Freight. I don't know the exact name of it, but I will include somewhere on the screen here what it is. Uh, but it is a pressure pot spray gun. Hooked one end up to the air compressor over there. Uh, but the whole idea here is it pressurizes this pot and it comes out of the end here with violence. And uh, it just comes out. It's a very, very thick mixture, which is why it has to be pressurized. The other thing I did do is I read through the Harbor Freight comments or the reviews on this, and there were a lot of very negative reviews on the tip with the tip leaking. And sure enough, when I put water in, in mine, the tip was just like leaking like crazy. Um, so I knew from reading in another forum post, I forget what forum it was in, but someone mentioned upsizing the, um, the tip there. And I think it was like, he had a precise amount, two point something millimeters. Anyways, I wanted to get a nice clean hole in there. So I just grabbed my smallest reamer I had, which I think is a number 40 reamer, which is somewhere around that recommended tip size that they were recommending for drilling it out to. So anyways, reamed it out, took a little polishing bit on my Dremel, polished out the inside, made it really, really nice and polished. And sure enough, it leaked a little bit with water, but with Zolotone, it never leaked. And I think water is just a, a thinner liquid. So it was a very, very slight drip out the end. Nothing though, like when I pulled it out of the box originally when it was just squirting water out. Again, I don't have video of it, um, but you may have to take more for it. If you're gonna do this, just trust, test it with water ahead of time. The other thing I read in the reviews is not to use um, any heavy cleaning products on the tank itself. Inside of there is a delicate O-ring and they say that it swells with acetone or probably MEK or anything else. But being that Zolotone is a water-based paint, I just clean it out with water each time and I made it through a couple of different sessions with this and water worked perfectly to clean the gun out and it is still very, very clean. So I never ended up using those harsh chemicals. So something to keep in mind too, um, just read the reviews before you use it. The insides of the doors are complete. It is the same finish uh, as the inside here. When it came to adding the cabin top or putting the cabin top back on, um, when it came to, let's see, the rivets on the sides, the way I painted those black, satin black Ace Hardware spray paint, sprayed inside of this bowl here, making a nice little puddle. And then before doing each rivet, took that rivet, kind of dunked it in there just to get it on the side to be visible when it's pushed through here. During the process of getting the rivets in there, the paint did scratch off in a couple of places, or not scrap off, but I kind of get rubbed off the, the wet paint there, which is fine um, because the inside here is not a consistent black. Uh, so it actually worked to kind of um, hide the rivets even more, being that the rivets aren't just a perfect black on a um, speckled finish. Uh, so that worked out well. Another thing that I did do on that topic of rivets is there is a backing aluminum piece here uh, that runs all the way back and then all the way around the top. They, according to the plans, you keep them loose. What I chose to do just so I can have it nice and finished was actually I bonded them in with tank sealant uh, before even finishing the fiberglass or the uh, interior uh, finishing work on the inside. When I bonded them in, I then was able to take that uh, filling stuff again and um, kind of blended out the transitions, made it look like it was part of the overall structure. And that way, when now it's painted and finished, you would never know that there's a aluminum strip in there. It just blends in very, very nicely. I would totally do that, do that again versus trying to rivet a second strip in there, probably having it get scratched. So anyways, those were bonded in prior to doing the uh, Zolotone finish on the inside here. Lastly, real quick, the camera battery's dying. Uh, lastly, when it came to the epoxy over here, what I chose to do, and do not take this part as a how-to guide, this has to do with overall structure, uh, but what I chose to do was I mixed up the, the epoxy compound like they mentioned, and on the outward facing side, um, I, wherever I found little gaps where I had too much fiberglass sanded off, I put that in a syringe, and I, where are my syringes? Put that in a syringe, uh, these were again from Total Boat, and just pumped it as much as I could from the outside here, after doing that, what I did on the inside was actually I tinted the epoxy. Total Boat makes a epoxy tinting pigment. Uh, but you'll see on the inside of here now, I don't have to paint this. And I thought I was gonna have to paint it. The reason why I did it is I wanted to have a good base to then spray Zolotone or spray paint if I was gonna try to match the sides here, uh, but paint. Anyways, I'm gonna leave it as is. It ended up looking great. So it's just a tinted structural epoxy uh, mixture. So I mixed it up like the plans call for, added just a tiny little bit amount of that black pigment from Total Boat, uh, and it left me with a really nice finished, um, finished looking epoxy. I then got really, really fancy and took a, uh, I had rubber gloves on and just lightly um, brought down, and just lightly brought down wherever I had thick clumps of epoxy. Um, and I think it turned out looking really, really nice, especially up front here. Um, this gap that they call for you to fill in. I'm happy with it. it it's not perfect, but 
I'm not looking for perfection. Uh, I am happy with how the overall thing here looks. So that is where we're at with the build. Uh, I hope to have some more hands-on, actually doing work type of videos in the future for you, but wanted to get you all up to speed on where we are. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in that next video. Adios.